today I'm doing something that I never thought I'd do. Um, I've seen loads of other people do it, and I've never really got it, but um, I sort of do now. Um, and I'm doing an unboxing, and it's for a company called Unicam. I paid full price for this at the Malvern show a week ago. Um, uh, the, this company is based, coincidentally, near to where we live. They're also in Somerset. They're in Ilminster. And they make this gadget that makes cycling for people with movement issues far more doable. Yeah, so what we have here is an adjustable crank that accommodates any range of knee bend. So you, if you've got a limited knee or hip flexion, we can fix the crank so that you can pedal pain free. You can see I've got normal range on my right knee, reduced range on my left knee. Um, and one of the problems I have um, especially with this leg, with some of the, because I wear, wear so many prosthetic socks, it, I get bunching right at the back of my knee. Um, when I'm riding a push bike, for instance, um, it can cut off the circulation slightly. Obviously, on a push bike, that gets relieved every time you cycle. So it's like, ow, oh, it's okay. Ow, oh, it's okay. But it's generally a little bit uncomfortable. Um, and in this, this looked like it might help and um, Paul was kind enough to let me have a go on his test bike and it was astonishingly brilliant and so I bought one full price it was a show price of 250 quid 249 pounds I'm not sure what they are normally outside of the show price um, but because I've got a problem which I guess everybody that's going to buy one of these probably will have some sort of medical issue you can get the vat knocked off so I think I paid 199 or something around there um, so that was good, paid full price, so there's nothing in this for, you know, this is this is pure enthusiasm making me unbox this. Um, and I think what Paul has invented, even though in this has been going some time, he's been on the TV, but it totally bypassed me. And I, I also showed it to my prosthesist um, after I'd bought it. Um, and he was terribly impressed and photocopied everything and is waiting to see this video to see how it looks when I put it on my bike. Um, so it's basically a cam system. I'm not going to try and explain the technicalities of it because I don't really get it. Oh, sorry, I don't really understand totally. But what I do love is nice engineering work. So for instance, on the GoPro right now, we've got a Ulanzi, um cast aluminium frame or billet aluminium, I'm not sure. And it's nice, it's nice stuff. Um, I like nice stuff to bolt onto my motorbike. And this is along those lines. So when you, so the unboxing, did not see? Um, and then you've got all the nuts and bolts in here to fit it. Whether I make head or tail of it remains to be seen. I'm sure I will. Um, yeah, it's all nice, nice components. And then this is the, the part that Paul makes and designed. Um, and it bolts onto the, the crank of your bike. Instructions are here where you position it. This will become more apparent when I try and actually bolt it on. So this, so this would be helpful if you had what I've got, which is which is a prosthetic, which means my knee doesn't bend brilliantly, especially when I'm at the end of the life of that prosthetic and I'm wearing a load of prosthetic socks and I get the bunching at the back of my knee. Or if you had a hip problem, um, a back problem, all sorts, actually. I think it would have even helped me when I had my broken ankle for 25 years before I had my leg amputated. Um, I had no movement at all in that ankle, mainly because it was so painful and also because there were so many fragments of bone jammed in different bits of my joint. So it was, in, it was incredibly painful. And I think I would have been able to cycle much easier with this. Um, so we'll fit it later and try it out and film it. And, um, and we'll see, we'll see how easy it is to fit and what it's like to ride. We'll try and get some on leg footage of that. But it's a lovely, lovely thing. I could just use it as a fiddly thing. Problem number one, I don't know what torque values my rider use to do up their pedals. I imagine they use some sort of pneumatic jackhammer because I've just had to take this off with the force of a hammer and that took a lot of blows. It was so over tightened. Um, right, so take this off. Yeah, that was almost to the point of needing to take the local push bike shop on it to see if they could like get it off with some nice tool. <laughs> Bolt that 
drop it into there <laughs> using the 17 mil spanner. <laughs> so there's another now, key in there. Now who's talking it too high? That's what I say. No, I didn't. No, it's perfectly done. <laughs> perfectly was <laughs> in. Okay. So. Get the side. That needs to run nice and tight. So that it's actually that one that I think needs a spacer. So let's just try. That just slots in the back there. I follow, follow by inserting sufficient space as well to ensure the secondary crank arm is seated at the pedal and crank are simultaneous. So what are you using there? It comes with a load of washers mm. which are going to use the spacers to space out that gap there. I think I'm only going to get three in there. Alright, four. This is when I wish my dear old dad was still alive. So now we have to remove one at a time this bolt and that bolt and that bolt and then reapply with some thread lock which it is supplied and tighten them up to 25 newton meters with your torque wrench. filming you and not what we were doing because <laughs> we're professional like that aren't we? We are. We are very, very, very professional. <laughs> <laughs> Threads the same then. I assume so. Maybe. I'm not really much of a cyclist. Much of a cyclist? Well, you're a bit of a cyclist. Wow. Well, done a bit. <laughs> Mostly on rally chopping. <laughs> How many years ago was that? Oh, crikey. Gotta be getting on for three at least. <laughs> <laughs> well, I used to ride a lot off road. But that was for fitness during the racing years. <laughs> but, um...
What do you think of it? I love it. It's very good. Does the job. Easy to fit? Yeah. Really? Yeah, if you really want to fit one to yours now, you try to do it in five minutes, wouldn't you? Yeah. Looks great too. We fitted the Unicam Retroflex RX3 that we bought from Melbourne show last week. Um, I'm not much of a, an instructions reader, although on this occasion I did need to. But it went on really easily. It probably took us, or, or me with Tom's invaluable assistance, probably 40 minutes to fit it. But if you wanted me to fit one to yours now, I reckon I could do it in 10. How did you find it on your My Rider? What, well, cycling? Mm. Yeah, lovely. It's really nice. So the only one I'd, I'd ridden Paul's demonstration bike um, at the show, and that, that felt amazing. And, and oddly, it's one of those things that you sort of... Uh, it doesn't look amazing. It doesn't look... The action doesn't look like, oh, my God, that's going to feel different. But it really feels different when you're cycling. All round, I'd say... I'd say for fitting, the first time of fitting, 7 out of 10, reading the instructions. 9 out of 10 when you get your head around it and understand the instructions. When you really understand the instructions, fitting it is a 10 out of 10. It's not. It's a very easy fit. And 10 out of 10 for the actual product. It's amazing. Paul is, as I said at the show, a bit of a genius. Verdict? Brilliant.